the people of South Sudan, Abia, River Mountain, Darfur, and all the other marginalized areas of Sudan have paid a heavy price during the long years of conflict. For too long, the enemies of peace in Sudan have tried to wipe those people, those communities out of existence, but yet they cling to hope that uh, people finally prevail. Uh, South Sudan is on the world map today because of the resilience of our people uh, who endured so much suffering and continue to do so in their daily lives. Our new country is still in pieces, burdened by numerous revealing challenges. We believe that our independence mark a great milestone in our quest for just peace. And in this regard, we pay tribute to our martyrs, uh, who pay the ultimate price, no longer with us. Um, and also, we do thank the nations hosted our people, um, continue to host our refugees, Canada being one of them because the humanitarian contribution you're making is giving us the hope to continue to sustain our lives and our struggles. My being here today is a great testament to the work of humanitarian organizations such as UNHCR, Red Cross, who have stayed with us through every step of the way uh, in our journeys. And we do not thank them enough Speak up a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> As exemplified by the work of this symposium, the humanitarian work of citizens of this great country and elsewhere is priceless. And we applaud your work and offer you our deepest gratitude. <coughs> your initiative provides a big <coughs> hope for all the marginalized people of Sudan and South Sudan. Over the past few days, in the last two days, you've heard from the experts and analysts of Sudan, in South Sudan, how the future uh, looks very grim for our people. We know that the political solutions such as the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, which was signed in 2005, and more recently, Cooperative Agreement, Cooperation Agreement, have resulted in little or no tangible peace dividends to the average citizen. So the question for us in this setting becomes, uh, what are we capable of doing? Knowing everything or having heard everything about Sudan and South Sudan, what can we do as peace-loving uh, members of the free world? Our problems are numerous. We cannot handle them alone. We need your help. We need your technical expertise. We need your encouragement. We need uh, the international community to help uh, increase the, or better the capacity of our government. And uh, empower the local populations. We know that there will be no big fixes to our problems, and we understand that our people may have to sacrifice more lives, more wealth, to sustain our sovereignty, and to defend our freedom. The pursuit of peace through political and military means has failed, as evidenced by the problems that continue to exist. And we urge policymakers and all the good Samaritans interested in the, in, in the issues of Sudan to pursue other means. We urge you to pursue peace through development. It might be a long process. We believe that this will be sustainable in the long run. Despite the challenges, we in South Sudan are hopeful the current generation of young people all across our nation 
provide this glimmer of hope. We are a nation of young people. 51% of our population is below the age of 18. And 72% of South Sudan is below the age of 30. So we are a young nation, also a young uh, nation of young people. The hope lies in how the country invests or nurtures its young generation. The hope lies in how the country brings development to our rural population. 83% of our people have no, live in the rural areas and as such have no access to roads and other means of transportation. Without the skills and technological know-how, cannot efficiently deliver uh, development for our people. This is why we are appealing for international friends and partners to lend us a helping hand. We need your help so that we can avoid the pitfalls that we felt was colonial Africa. People, countries have become independent in situations continue to worsen as uh, some of the speakers have noted earlier. We believe that the primary responsibility of nation building cannot be outsourced. And that calls upon all of the people of South Sudan, more specifically the current government, to see to it that proper foundations are laid for future prosperity. We cannot just talk about generalities. There are key specific strategies that we believe can deliver development for our people. We believe investment in education, gender equity, rehabilitation of physical infrastructure, development of rural economy, and civic education can deliver these goals. I believe education can be a key driver for social progress in South Sudan. Currently, the literacy rate is at a mere 27%. Our human capital is seriously lagging behind, and there needs to be quick action in that regard. I believe the situation can be remedied in the short term if we look to our diaspora communities. We in the diaspora are ready to contribute to nation building in South Sudan. There are hundreds of South Sudanese across North America, Europe, and Australia who hold university degrees and who are training in other uh, professional skills. Its people are ready to serve their country. We urge our government and all the interested partners, those who are working in South Sudan, to look at this, the contribution that these people can make. Over the long term, however, we believe in investment at grassroots level. We have to invest in primary education, secondary education, to uh, harness the skills of those 51%, 72% of our young people. So in the realm of what can we do, this is an opportunity for those who are interested to bring development to South Sudan. This is one area where you can make a difference. Another front, we advocate for equity and opportunity for all genders nation must pursue the policy of equity in education opportunity for all young people regardless of gender, tribe, or other affiliations. Our communities need to take a hard look at some of our traditional practices that put majority, if not all of our sisters, to a greater disadvantage. Practices such as forced marriage, early marriages, deprived, sisters from getting an education and 
uh, bettering their lives. Yet we know, especially the war generation of Sudanese, know uh, the strength of our women. We know that it was the Sudanese women who took care of the orphans, the wounded, when our dads, uncles, fought the war of liberation, the battlefields. We know that they can do more. We have to equip them with that education. Empower the women of Sudan, and you end up building or bettering the whole nation. We also believe development require investing in the fiscal infrastructure, not just a belief, but a reality, because of the situation in our country. Our country has not evolved since, 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 basically since we were created, since we became into existence. We have lived in our rural areas forever, so it's very hard to talk about rehabilitation because there was nothing there to begin with. So we are urging uh, those who want to bring development to look at investing in fiscal infrastructure. And we do have the resources. We do have abundance of resources, such as oil, potentially in agriculture. But these resources can be a curse if not well managed. Therefore, we cannot just ask for assistance. We need help to, to ensure that we are able to efficiently exploit our resources to invest in these areas. Our rural economy serves as a great potential for progress. The majority of our rural populations sustain their livelihoods through subsistence farming livestock rearing and fishing. If we equip these people with better skills, they can be more productive. When our people become productive, they'll be able to, families will be able to feed their dependents. Some can even uh, generate modest income. They have a little surplus that. Indeed, a sustainable economic future is within our reach, but we need the right tools, and that is where the work of experts come in. We would like you to focus on how to give us the tools to better our lives, because that is where we fail. We have the determination. We want to be better. As some have noted, we want peace. 99% of people say they want peace, but how do you deliver? Your technical expertise is urgently needed and will make a big difference. One other area of investment, this is the last point with regard to investment, is our civic education. The civil society in South Sudan is in disarray. Years of conflict have left deep grudges and mistrust among our diverse communities. Some sectors of our society are calling for truth and reconciliation to help the nation heal from self-inflicted wounds. So prior to independence, South Sudan was nothing but an amalgamation of tribes. Our former masters, it's true, our former masters, and I say masters because Indeed, there has been and continues to be elements of uh, racist and slavery uh, in the Sudan. So we are not ashamed to, 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 to admit that there have been elements of slavery subjected to our people, and that's why I refer to them as our former masters, and that include the colonial masters, where used, uh, they used the tactics of divide and rule keep our people apart. We founded a country before we could learn the art of living in peaceful coexistence. Our patriotism is still tested by strong tribal allegiance. The spirit behind 
the lyrics of our national anthem is yet to find permanence in our hearts. We are yet to enact a permanent constitution for our country. And now it's incumbent upon all South Sudanese to prevent thy nation from being hijacked by the privileged few. Investing in civic education, therefore, will empower South Sudanese to understand thy rights, thy political system, hence enabling them to demand accountability and transparency from thy government. Civic society actors such as media groups, religious groups, opposing political parties, women groups, additional authorities, and other stakeholders are to be supported in thy quest to spearhead civic education of our populace. Participatory democracy and diversity must be enshrined in our tools of governance for us to see results. Freedom, equality, respect, rule of law must be the founding pillars of our democracy. I'll conclude my remarks by saying this. Despite separation of our country into two, we profoundly believe that we are still one people, united by our common history. People of South Sudan are sympathetic to the plight of other marginalized Sudanese. And until the rest of Sudan is peaceful, we will always consider our freedom partial. Those who have been to South Sudan will uh, attest that all is not lost. It's not mystery, <coughs> mystery, mystery. You go to the streets of Juba, you will see many faces, the spirit of determination. You find so many local entrepreneurs going from office to office, waiting long line at the banks, looking for an opportunity to make a buck. We believe these people want to pursue progress. We believe that these people want to better their lives. So it's up to us to partner with uh, those local entrepreneurs to try to bring peace through indirect means. We want our partners, friends in the international community, know that South Sudan is open for business. And we appeal to you to help us realize the dream of our late visionary leader, Dr. John Garang de Maggio, of taking towns to the people. Investment opportunities abound, such as agriculture, natural resource, tourism, physical infrastructure, education, supporting entrepreneurship, social infrastructure. We believe these are areas of potential and we are urging you to give priority to them or pursue them as the other means of bringing peace have ultimately resulted in little uh, tangible benefits. Political uh, solutions have not worked for us and we are appealing to you to help us bring about development, even though there will continue to be instability, there will continue to be uh, human loss. We believe that in the long run, our nation will prosper when we pursue these goals. The only way we will commemorate the lives of those who have fallen in pursuing peace justice and human, uh, human dignity to achieve sustainable development that guarantees a better future for all South Sudanese. We invite you to help us make this a reality and we invite you to come to South Sudan and do business with our people. Thank you.